What's up, everybody? Today we're talking Premiere, basic editing tools, Foley sound effects, audio levels, and so much more. So if you're ready to be a superhero, we'll get started. Today we're going to learn how to edit audio in Premiere like a Foley artist. A Foley artist is someone that recreates sound for film and video. Here's what our video looks like without audio. And here's what it looks like with audio. So now, let's all become Foley artists. All right, so the first thing we want to do is create a folder on our desktop or in your documents folder so that you can house all of your media together. I'm going to call this folder Foley. And inside, you need to add the audio clips folder that has all of the audio clips we'll use to begin this project and the raw Foley video that we'll be using, which is of an old cartoon clip that's in the public domain. You can find all these items in the description below. Once you've got all of your files downloaded and into your Foley folder, we can jump into Premiere. All right, the first thing we want to do in Premiere is create a new project. So I'm going to click on New Project. And then I want to give my project a name. So we'll call this last name, first initial underscore Foley. And again, that would be your last name and your first initial underscore Foley. I want to choose a location to save all of my files. And I'm going to put this in the same Foley folder that I created on my desktop. So for my location, I'm going to click on Browse. I'm going to locate my desktop and then my Foley folder. And then I'm going to put it in there with my audio clips and my raw video file. Once I've selected that, hit choose. We'll leave all the other factory defaults as they are. And then click on OK. All right. Now, when I first come in here, my workspace is on editing. I can change my workspaces by clicking on any of these items up at the top. Or I could go to Window, Workspaces, and choose one of those. We're actually going to create a custom workspace for our project. I'm going to click back on editing here. To import our media, I'm going to right click into my project panel, which is my bottom left hand panel. Right click and choose import. Make sure you locate that Foley folder again. And we've made a project when we saved our Premiere file, so we're not going to select that. But we are going to select our raw MP4 video. I'm going to hold Command on a Mac or Control on a PC and also click that audio clips folder. When both of those are selected, go ahead and click on import. Your media will come in in two different ways. It may come in an icon view, which will be a visual picture that looks like a square with a line underneath it at the bottom of our project window. Or the double squares and the double lines will be list view. You can choose whichever way works best for you. Since we're working with audio files and not really with visuals for this project, I'm going to keep it in list view. And I'm actually going to toggle down this little arrow so I can see all of my audio clips. Now, if they don't show up numerically for you, if you notice mine are not numerically in order, the name association right here in my project window, if I click on that, it should put them in numerical order for you. We're going to be working with about one through six or seven to get you started for this project here today. I'm just going to close this back up for a minute so I can see my raw video file. All right, I'm going to create a timeline or a sequence from my raw video file. To do this, I'm going to left click, hold, and drag over to the right to where my timeline is and let go. This is going to create a timeline with the exact same aspect ratio dimensions as my original video clip. Now, as I said before, we're using an old cartoon that's in the public domain. So the aspect ratio from that one is going to be more of a 4 by 3 as opposed to the 16 by 9 that we're used to today. I'm not really concerned with the visuals of that. We're focusing more on the audio, so it's okay that it has those black borders around the edge for today. Now, I do want to rename my timeline. And when I look back in my project area, there is a timeline now associated with this. If I look at my icons, I've got a folder for my audio clips. I've got what looks like a series of bars and a line going through it. That symbolizes my timeline. And then I've got a purple and a green icon, the purple being a film strip symbolizing video and the green being an audio waveform symbolizing audio. Now, while there is audio associated with this file of video in my timeline, 
you'll see there's a straight line down here and there's no waveform visible. So it's just silent sound. It's blank sound. I want to get rid of that. I'm going to click on my clip in my timeline. You'll see it highlights it by putting this white box around everything. And I'm going to unsync these so I can delete my audio track. So with it highlighted, I'll right click. I'm going to scroll down in this menu that pops up and then I'm going to choose unlink from the options. Then you'll see these are two separate individual clips in my timeline. I'll click on my audio and I'm going to hit my delete key on my keyboard so that that audio track disappears. We will be using lots of audio tracks today. So where you see A1, 2, and 3, we're going to be using a lot more of those as we go along. The other thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm on my selection arrow, which is that first tool on my toolbar that's located in between, currently between my project and my timeline. I want to make sure that that tool is selected. And then with this clip, you'll see I can slide that left and right in my video track. Make sure it's all the way to the left, all the way back here at zero. This line that runs through here is called your playhead. I can click on that little symbol up there and drag it left and right so I can drag through and see what my visuals are. I could also click anywhere in the timeline area to advance my playhead. I'm going to leave it back at the front for right now, but make sure that video clip is all the way to the left. Now, I'm going to get used to labeling and locking layers as I go through each one of these things. So first thing is I want to label my timeline. I'm going to come back into my project window, and I am going to click on the words for my sequence. Again, my sequence is represented by this little bar chart icon with a line through it. And I'm going to call it the same thing as my project. So last name, first initial underscore Foley. And then I'm going to hit return. Now, as it goes down, it's going to highlight the next clip if I wanted to rename that one. I'm not going to rename that one. So I'm going to hit that ESC key at the upper left-hand corner or that escape key at the upper left corner of my keyboard. Now I'm going to lock my video track because that's the only thing we're going to do to our video track. So I'm going to lock it so that I can't mess it up. And now I'm going to rearrange my workspace a little bit to give me more of a visual for editing audio. So we're going to basically change all of these panels around that we currently see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start in the upper right hand corner where my program window is. And I'm going to put my cursor on the words that say program, last name, first initial Foley. And I'm going to left click and hold. And while I'm left clicking and holding, I'm going to move around. And you're going to see all these colors and boxes change. I'm going to get where there is a purple bar right on top of where my project panel is on the bottom left hand side. Once I see that purple bar on top, not below, not inside, not at the bottom, but right on top of the word that says project, then I'm going to let go. Now I'm going to come back up top where my source window is. And I'm going to click on those lines that are showing up right there, that little hamburger menu. When I click that, I'm going to choose Panel Group Settings, Close Panel Group. And that whole top section is going to disappear. Notice my timeline has now shifted up on this right-hand side to cover all this area on the right. I'm going to make one more change over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to click on Project this time where all of my clips are located, all of my media is located. And again, I'm going to put my mouse on the word project this time, last name, first initial Foley. I'm going to left click and hold and drag down below to the very, very bottom till I get this purple at the very, very bottom and let go. Now I've got these other menu items that are still listed up top with my program. We're going to get rid of those last few. So click back on the word program. Again, I'm going to click my little hamburger menu that's associated this time with program. And I'm going to choose Close Other Panels in Group. And now what I end up with is my program window on the left, which is going to be a visual of my cartoon I'm adding sound to. I end up with my project panel at the bottom, which is going to have all of my media and all of my audio clips. And then I'm going to have my timeline on the right-hand side. Now I'm going to add one other thing to my timeline that's not there before I go and save this workspace. Go up your top menu to Window, and I want to come down to Audio Track Mixer. We're going to use this to adjust some of our sounds as we go through. So click on Audio Track Mixer, and I want to move that so it goes along with my timeline. So I'm going to put my mouse over the word Audio Track Mixer, 
left click hold and drag and put it down here on top of where it says my timeline is my last name first initial and then let go now you can see this is an audio track mixer my tab takes me back to my timeline and then i can come back over here and i can re-expand and bring back down my visual for my cartoon this is what your end result should look like because i want to be able to click and go back and forth between my visuals of my audio view meters and what i'm working on here in the timeline the other thing is i want to get used to labeling these audio tracks as i go along so where it says a1 a2 a3 if I click on my audio track mixer, you'll see it says audio one, audio two, audio three, or A1, A2, A3. We're gonna label these as we go through, and we'll use these sliders to make adjustments to our volume units meter or our VU meter, which is located over here on the right side of our entire timeline area. That's gonna show us how loud or how quiet all of our audio is. Our final mix, which is our final output down here at the bottom far right side of our mixer, we want that output to show up on our VU meter on the right between minus six and minus 12 is our optimal area of volume control that we want to have for that. All right, I'm going to click back on my timeline and now let's save this workspace. So I'm going to go up top to window, come down to workspace, and I'm going to save as new workspace. And then I'm going to call this Foley. Once you've got it named as your new workspace, click on OK. And now if you look at all of your workspaces at the top where that double arrow is, we now have one that says Foley. If I were to choose a different workspace, my windows are going to change. But when I go back to that double arrow and I choose Foley, it's going to reset to that workspace that we created. So anytime that you're working with different items, you can create your own workspace and customize your workspace to make it fit your workflow a little bit better inside of Premiere. We don't really have a need for all these extra video tracks that we have here, so I'm gonna close those down. So I'm gonna put my mouse to the right of this little gray area on V3 and right click, and I'm gonna delete that track for V3. I'm gonna do the same thing and delete that track for V2. So all I have is the V1 there. Below that V1, there's a thicker horizontal bar. I'm actually going to adjust that bar and move it up towards the top so that that video track goes all the way to the top. And now I've got lots of space below that for all the audio tracks that I'm going to use. Now I'm gonna save that, Command S to save or Control S to save on a PC. The first thing I'm going to start with on my A1 track is going to be my voiceover of my narration. There's only one part in our clip that has narration. And if you scroll through here, you can kind of see the beginning. They're getting in the plane. Then we transition to our new scene. And then we've got our villain here that stands up and says the hour has come. You can see his mouth moving. The hour has come. So that's where we've got to add our audio. So we're gonna put our voiceover for that one piece on our first track. So let's find that spot in time here where we can kind of see he begins to talk. Right around in there, around 32, roughly maybe 31, somewhere around in there, he's getting ready to talk. So I'm gonna go and find in my audio clips, the hour has come is my first one. We've got these first few labeled for you. So 01 is going to be our first track that we're going to use. So I'm going to left click and hold in my audio clips that are in my folder inside of my project window. And then I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to put it on A1. And I'm going to drop it roughly around the area where I ended my timeline. Realize that as I move this icon here for my timeline in my program window on the left, it's also going to move it over here in my timeline on the right. So as I move my program window playhead, it moves the playhead inside of my timeline and vice versa. All right, so I want to check and see a couple of things here. One, I wanna line this up so it matches what our voice is. And two, I wanna look over in the far right to see how loud it is in our VU meter. Notice as I click around these boxes, it'll get a blue highlight box around wherever I click. Make sure that you're clicked in the window panel that you actually want to make adjustments for. If not, if you're using a keyboard shortcut or if you're using a certain tool, it may not work properly unless you're clicked on those specific areas. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is how loud this clip is. So if we watch our view meters on the right, I'm going to hit my space bar to play and my space bar to pause. 
spacebar to play. The hours come. So we'll see that was really loud because I've got these two little red squares at the top of my VU meter. That means that my volume is too loud. Remember, we want to be between this minus 6 and this minus 12. This is where we're going to use our track mixer. So I'm going to click on my tab here for my track mixer. And I'm going to use my playhead and my program window over here. And I'm going to back that up a little bit. And I'm going to watch again the VU meters this time on audio 1. The hours come. So I've got to bring that down, right? So I'm going to use this slider here to adjust a little bit. So I'm going to pull down to, let's just start with minus one so we can see how it changes. And I can click on these little red squares and make them go away. All right, I'm going to back up and we're going to check our audio again. Space bar to play. The hours come. I'm going to go one more and we'll call it done at minus four. So around minus four, and let's just check it one more time to make sure it's good. The hours come. All right, our audio levels are good. Now we need to go and match it up with what our character says when they say it. Click back on your sequence. Again, that's the one that's last name, first initial underscore Foley. And I'm going to visually try to figure out what his mouth says. So I'm going to back this up. Now, I'm actually going to hit this M button for mute so it doesn't kind of mess me up a little bit. So I'm going to hit that M on my A1 to mute it. That way I don't hear my sound as I scrub through it over here with my playhead. And then visually, I'm going to try to see what he says here about the hour has come. So right in there is about where his mouth is opening up. It's really tiny for me to see this right now in my timeline. I'm going to hit my plus or my equals key. If you look at the numbers that run horizontally across your keyboard and you find that zero on the far right, to the right of that zero is a minus key that will zoom you out into smaller areas. And then there's that plus and equal key to the right of that that will zoom you in. Those zoom you in horizontally. So I'm going to do that first to zoom in horizontally. I also want to expand my track vertically. And so I'm going to hold my option key or my alt key on a PC. And I'm going to hit my plus key while I'm doing that. And that's going to expand me vertically so I can see my waveforms a little bit better here. Now this waveform is going to show me where my audio rises and falls. I can see my person speaking over here on the left, but I don't have a waveform yet. So I've got to move that back. So again, make sure you're on your selection arrow, which is your toolbar located right here now between our program window and our timeline. I'm going to click on my A1 clip of my narration. It's going to put this white box around it to show me it's selected. And then I'm going to drag it to the left. Notice I don't want to click on this line that's going through here. So make sure you click a little bit higher up. If you ever mess up, you can hit Command Z to undo or Control Z on a PC to undo. You can always go up also to, to edit and undo to get that back. So stay away from that line for right now. Click on the clip so it's selected. Kind of move to the higher area of the clip. And I'm just going to slide it back a little bit. Now, if it's getting kind of the snapping movement that you have and you want a little bit more free range, at the left-hand corner of my timeline, I've got these series of numbers called time code. Well, that shows me hours, minutes, seconds, and frames of where I am in time. Below that is this little horseshoe that'll allow us to snap or unsnap. If it's blue, it's going to snap to all my areas in here. But if I take that blue off by clicking on it, I get a little bit more free range to slide it. And so that's what I want right now because I want to slide a little bit to adjust little increments of time about where that audio comes in. Now let's take a peek and let's see if we're close or not. I'm going to hit that M button to turn my sound back on. The hours come. All right, I like it. I think we're good there. Now that's the only thing I am going to put on that audio one track right there. So I want to name it over here. I'm going to go do right click on that track and rename. And I'm going to call it VO there and hit return. And let's see if it kept it over here on our track mixer. It did. So that's where I'm going to label those from now on is over here on my track. So that's my voiceover. I've got that one set. I'm going to lock that. I'm going to put all of my audio clips on separate tracks to make sure I could adjust them however I need to. Because we're going to add a little bit of change to a couple of these. And if I put them all on the same track, it's going to mess up with all the clips. I want them to be in separate tracks so I can adjust them independently. So the voiceover is the first thing we got down. For this project, we're going to have music in a certain area. 
from the preview that I showed you at the beginning, the music comes in as the scene changes. So let's find that area. So as I drag my playhead back, you'll see it goes from the airplane flying away to this little dip to black, and then we change scenes to the villain's headquarters on the mountain. I want to add some music right around that transitional piece right there as it goes to black. So I'm going to put my playhead roughly around this 13 seconds and a few frames area where I'm in the black area, and I'm going to add my music. That is my second clip in my project panel down in the bottom left-hand corner, that O2 Creepy Night. And so I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to drag that in, and I'm going to put it in here. Now, because I've cut my horseshoe off, it doesn't snap to my playhead, so I'm going to turn it back on briefly, grab my audio on A2, and bring it back so it snaps to my playhead at the point where I want it to go. And then let's just look visually over here on the left and see what that looks like. I'm going to back up my playhead where we will have a plain sound eventually. And then it goes to black. And then it comes up roughly around the time where we see our villain's headquarters come in. Now, I can't see all of my tracks over here right now because I'm zoomed in. If you want to see all of your tracks in one visual, if you look at your keyboard again where we found that plus and minus key up at the top, that delete key is up there in the upper right. Well, below that delete key is a straight vertical line and a slash. If you hit that key for that slash, you'll see all of your window in one workspace. And then I want to label this audio track that says audio two. I'm going to click on that and then right click and rename. And I'm going to call that music and hit return. And now I want to check my audio levels for that track. So I'm going to click back on my audio track mixer. I'm going to play. I think the music's in pretty good shape. Let's go back a little bit farther to the beginning here and listen to it. The hour has come. I think our voiceover needs to come down just a little bit more. So I'm actually going to unlock my A1, go back to my mixer. I'm going to drop that down to minus six, I believe. And let's see what that sounds like now. The hour has come. I like that better. So we're going to go with that for minus six for our voiceover. And our music, we're going to leave at zero. I'm going to click back onto my timeline. And again, I'm going to lock A1, which is my VO. I'm going to lock A2, which is my music. And now I'm going to go and add in some of my other sounds that I'm going to use to complete this project. Let's get back to the front now. So I'm going to move all the way to the left-hand side, to the beginning of our video. And our first thing is our plane, our propeller plane. And then we've got our young lady here that is strapping on her helmet and then strapping on her goggles. And then we've got the sound of the plane flying away that we're going to work with. All of those are going to come through of our sounds over here. First one I'm going to use is the ambience of the airfield. Now, if you can't read all of these words completely, there's a couple ways you can do this. Number one is hover your mouse over the area of your project panel and then hit your tilde key. Right below your escape key in the upper left-hand corner, in the far left, there's that tilde key, which is that little curved horizontal line. Hit your tilde key and that's going to make everything a little bit bigger. And then you can put your mouse in between the name and the frame rate. You'll see a little vertical line. You'll get a hot dog icon. You can left click and hold and drag to the right. You can see your file names a little bit bigger. So this prop runway is what we'll be going to. And I'll hit my tilde key again to go back. Now that I can see my names and my files a little bit bigger, I'm on clip three. I'm going to left click hold and drag that to A3 and drop that in there. And then we're going to check our sound. The way I'm going to do this, I am actually going to solo this track. So before you saw me hit the M when we were trying to line up to mute our sound of our person speaking, this time I'm going to hit the S and what that's going to do is solo so the only track I hear is what's on A3 and my music and my voiceover will be quiet, they'll be muted out. So I'm going to hit S to solo and I'm going to watch my VU meters for my sound. Sound looks pretty good on that, so I'm going to hit the S to cut the solo back off. Now, I know I don't want the propeller to go all the way over to where I have the scenes of my villain. 
and I need it to stop roughly again in that same little dip transition as we change scenes. So as we sort of fade the black, I'm going to drag my playhead here. And right before we see our villain come up right here where our music starts, I'm going to put my playhead there. I'm going to click to highlight my clip down on Audio 3, and I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to hit Command-K to cut. I'm going to click the back clip so it's selected with the white box, and I'm going to hit Delete. And let's go and adjust our audio for our plane. So I'm going to plus to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to move my playhead back to the front, and I'm going to watch my visuals on the left. As we get to this section right here where we're not directly in front of the plane, the plane is going to be flying away from us, so we want that sound to get quieter as if the plane is drifting farther away. Here's how we're going to do that. If you look at your toolbar, uh, three tools up from the bottom, you'll see the pen tool. Keyboard shortcut is P for pen. So I'm going to click on my pen tool. On my clip that I have on Audio 3, there's this line running right through the middle of it. That's my volume level. I am going to adjust that by adding keyframes, and I'm going to use the pen to make keyframes. So where that playhead is, that's where the scene changed, where the plane is going to fly away. So I'm going to click on that line and add one keyframe. I'm going to move my mouse down to the right a little bit, and I'm going to click and add a second keyframe. Now I have two keyframes there. I'm going to go back to my selection tool. Keyboard shortcut is V as in victory. I'm going to click on my last keyframe that I made down here on that volume line. Left click, hold, and drag it all the way down, and then slide it all the way to the right. So what's going to happen is it's going to get quieter over that period of time. So now let's kind of click back and drag. And watch. So we see the plane full in our program window as I play space bar. It gets quieter the farther away as it goes. So as that plane drifts away, it gets quieter until it fades out and then our music comes in. So now we've got our plane sound there. We do want a quick little fade up at the beginning just because my visual fades in. So I want to add a fade up on the beginning of that left edge of Audio 3. And to do that, I need my Effects panel. I'm going to go to my top, top menu to Windows, come down and select Effects. And then I'm going to choose Audio Transitions. Under Crossfade, I'm going to choose this Constant Power. I'm going to left click, hold, and drag, and drop it on that left edge right there. And let's see if that's too big or if I need to shorten it down a little bit. Click back on your program window to see your visual and watch and let's see how they match up when I hit my space bar. That worked pretty good, so I'll leave that as it is and I'll save it. I want to name this audio track, so I'm going to right click in that little gray area beside audio 3 and click on rename and I'm going to call this plain and then hit return. Now I'm going to lock that layer so I don't mess it up. All right, now we're going to proceed forward to the snapping of the helmet and the putting on the goggles. So again, I'll drag my playhead in my program window over here and find that area where the snap is roughly there around 405-ish. We can see the snap taking place. So I'm going to come down here to my project window and find audio clip number four, which is going to be the snap. Now, if you notice, before I come over here in my timeline, I'm out of audio tracks. So I want to add an additional audio track. You can do these one by one, or if you know how many tracks you're going to have, then you can go ahead and add all those tracks at one time. We're going to do them one at a time as we go along, but I'll show you how you can add multiple ones as well. First thing I want to do is I'm going to shrink all of my audio tracks so that I've got more space, and so that when I expand them, they will expand exponentially the same. To do that, I'm going to click back on my timeline first, hold my Option or Alt key, and then hit my Minus key to shrink those all the way down to super tiny. Then where I've got my A1, A2, and A3, I'm going to go to the far right of that, to the right of that little microphone icon, and I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose Add Track. And what that's going to do is add one single track. If I wanted to add multiple tracks, and I knew how many tracks it was going to be, I could right click and I could go to Add Tracks. And if I go to Add Tracks, I can choose. I don't want any more video tracks, so I could put zero. I do want additional audio tracks, so I could change that number from 1 
to let's say two because I know we're going to add in a couple of more sounds. So I'll just put two and then I would have my submix track also at zero. My track type will leave it stereo. I'll click off everything so it snaps that two into place and then I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to add multiple audio tracks for you. So as you go through and watch this video and count the number of sounds that you need to add, you can go ahead and add all of those tracks at one time. Or you can do them individually by adding a track just like we just did. Now again, the reason we shrunk everything down is because if we don't, when we go to expand everything, it won't expand at the same rate. So that's why I shrunk everything down, and I'm going to shrink these down too, so that all of the A4, I'm going to click to turn that one on, and the A5, and the A6, and any of the other ones that you add, shrink them all the way down with that Option Minus key, and then when you expand them, again with Option Plus, they all expand at the exact same size. All right, let's go and add in this snap. So I'm going to find the O4. I'm going to drag it over to track A4, and it's super tiny. So I'm going to hit my plus equals key to zoom in a little bit more. And that little peak that you see in the audio, that's roughly where this snap is that I want to hit. So I'm going to left, I'm going to go back up, make sure my horseshoe is off. I'm going to left click and hold and drag and try to line that little snap up right about there. Let's look and see what we got. I heard a little snap. It looked like it snapped at about the right time. Let's look one more time with our visual on the left. Looks pretty good. Again, I can drag through here and kind of see where that snap is. You can see you're kind of pushing down. If you look at your program window, you can see the hands move down to snap. So that means we got our snap in pretty good place. So that one's good. So I'm going to label that one. So where it says audio four on my track, I'm going to right click and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it a snap and hit return. The other thing I want to check is my volume level over here. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to look at my VU meter and see if it over modulates or if I can still hear it with the plain sound. I can, just that one little snap works just fine. If you needed to raise it or lower it, you know how to do that now in your audio mixer. You would come back to where you see snap in your audio track mixer and you could use that slider to bring it up or down for any sounds that you have that you're adding in to your project. All right. Let's go back to our timeline and we're going to lock that A4 where our snap is. The next one we need to find is the goggles that are being put on. So again, I'm going to grab my playhead over here in my program window and the goggles come on about right there. So we want to add that goggle sound onto A5. Let's go into our project panel and find clip number five, our swimming goggles. I'm going to left click, hold and drag and move it over and drop it onto A5. And this little area right here is where the goggles get snapped on. So I'm gonna move this clip back to the left and kind of see what we can get here to make an adjustment for when the goggles come on. And back up a little bit. So you can see how they kind of land over and then they pop on the head. I'll drag back a little bit more so we can see. So they should snap right when they come down right around in there. You can hear that pop in the audio. Let's check our waveform. So I'm actually going to solo that to make sure it doesn't over modulate that sound. So I'll back up a little bit and listen and it comes up. We can see the pop. Watch it one more time. I think it goes a little bit up but I think we're still in good shape because it doesn't go into the red. And if we unsolo it by hitting the S, let's see how it sounds with our plane. And we can still hear it with our plane, so we're in good shape. All right, so let's label that one now. For my audio five, I'm gonna right click and rename. I'm gonna call that glasses for our airplane glasses. And then I'm going to lock that layer. And again, I'm gonna command S to save or control S to save on a PC. That gets us through all of our airplane scenes. Now. We proceed forward to our villain. So let's go forward to where our villain is. We've got our music as it comes in. And now we see we've got a clock ticking on the wall. We've got a crow crowing a couple of times. And then we've got our voiceover before it changes scenes. All right, so let's get you through this scene right here, and then you guys can do the next part. Let's start back at our clock ticking. So right around here is where we see our clock introduced at around the 20 second area. 
I've got another audio track down here for A6. So I'm going to go find my TikTok clock sound at number six in my project window. Left click, hold, and drag. And I'm going to move it down to where my playhead is down in here. I'm just going to slide down my timeline a little bit in here. You could hit your minus key to zoom out a little bit too if you wanted to. This TikTok sound starts roughly right around in here. <laughs> Now, if you notice visually the sound and the TikTok. So the TikTok sound that I have is a little bit faster than what the pendulum moves in my visuals on my screen. So I've got to slow this down a little bit. I'm going to zoom out by hitting that slash key. And I want to affect my A6 by slowing down the speed of that sound. So I'm going to do that with speed and duration. So with that clip highlighted, again, remember it's highlighted because you got that white box around it. I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to speed and duration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the speed of this audio for this clock to about 75%. So I'm going to type in 75 and hit return. The clip will get longer, but the sound will also elongate. Listen to how it sounds and watch the pendulum now. Now our clock sound ticking matches the sound of the visual it would make when our pendulum swings to the left and then swings to the right. And we want this sound to last all of our scene. So we've got to look and see where this scene ends right around here. And we'll zoom back in so we can see. And that last tick right there that's about to come up, that's where we want to cut it because our scene is changing going down into the basement. So I'm going to still make sure that I've got that clip selected. I'm going to command K to cut. The back half is the part we want to get rid of. So I'm going to click on that. So it is now selected and hit the delete key. And then I'm going to hit my minus key to zoom back out. And we'll see how that finishes there at the end. And that matches pretty well. So let's do a label on that one. So for audio six, I'm going to move to the right to the gray area. Right click, rename. I'm going to call that clock tick and hit return and I'm going to solo it and watch my levels. Levels look good in the VU meter. I'll cut the solo off. I can hear it ticking with my music. So I'm in good shape with that one. So I'm going to lock my A6. All right. We're going to do one more here and that's going to be our crowing. And then I'm going to let you guys finish the rest. Again, we've got to add an audio track. So I'm going to come over here and shrink all these down again with my option minus and shrink them all down. Anytime I'm going to add a track, I do that first. So when I expand them, they expand exponentially the same. I'm going to move to the right of that little microphone again on my bottom track here because I want to continue to go down. And I'm going to right click on the bottom of A6 and I'm going to add a track. I'm just going to add it in. And again, one more time, I'm going to hit option minus to shrink them all the same. And then option plus for that equals key to bring them all back so they expand at the same rate. I'm going to click on the A7 to make that track active. And I'm going to go and I'm going to find where my bird calls. And they do it twice. And since he does it twice, I'm going to keep them both on the same track because it's the same sound. And I'm going to drag back a little bit here and look. And it looks like... Right around there, you can see the neck of the bird coming up where it calls. As that neck is about to expand and call, that's where we want that first call to come into place. So in my audio clips, I'm going to find the bird call clip 07 and drag it over onto track audio 07. And I'm going to hit my plus equal key to zoom in. And I'm going to click and drag to the left so that, that call sort of matches where that first call is going to hit roughly around the neckline there where that neck is extended. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> All right, now it's in there and it matches, but it's a little bit high pitched. I want to make this more of a villain crow. So I am going to adjust the speed and duration of this as well to make the pitch a little bit deeper just like we did with our clock to slow it down. I'm gonna right click on that clip, and again, I'm gonna to go to speed and duration. This time, let's try about 80% for my speed, and then hit return, and let's listen to it now. 
That's a much deeper call than what we had before. Let me undo so you can hear the difference. So this is before. And then I will redo. And this is after. I like that a lot better. So that's what we'll use for our crowing sound. And again, our birds are going to crow one more time. So I'm going to go back into my program, grab my playhead and drag to the right. And again, right there, you can see the neck extending again. So that's where I want to put my crowing sound again. Now, I don't have to drag it back over and change the speed and duration again. I can just duplicate the clip. So with the clip selected on Audio 7, I'm going to place my cursor on top of the clip. I'm going to hold down my Option key on a Mac or your Alt key on a PC. And then left click and drag. And I'm going to drag it over and then let go. And then now I've got my duplicate. Let's see if it matches up. I think that looks good. All right, so now we've got all of those first few pieces together. I'm going to label this last audio track. I'm going to right click and rename. I'm going to call that call. I'm going to hit Command S to save. I'm going to solo it and check our volume levels. Looks good. And then I'm going to unsolo that and I'm going to lock it. And this gets you going into the dungeon area of the lab. All of the sounds that we're using for these projects fall under the Creative Commons, either with or without attribution. Places like MixKit, Orange Free Sounds, Zapsplat, Pixabay, and Ben Sound are all places where you can find audio to use for your projects, either royalty free or by providing attribution. And you can see our attributes in the description below. Okay, so your job from here is to go and get the rest of the audio files that you need to complete this project using the websites that we've provided. Once you're all done, let me show you how we're going to export. Make sure that your blue box is around your timeline. Then we will go up to our top menus to File, come down to Export, and choose Media. We want to make sure that our format is H.264. Make sure that your preset is Match Source High Bit Rate. For our output name, that blue word there, we're going to click it. Make sure you choose that Foley video that we created earlier. And make sure that you've got your name saved correctly in the Save As spot. It's going to make your video file format an MP4 and then click on Save. Before we export, the last thing we want to do on the bottom left hand side where it says Sequence In and Out, hit that drop down arrow and choose Entire Sequence. And then you can click Export. Once your final video is done, let's go take a peek and see how it came out. All right, everything looks great. And that's how you work with audio inside of Premiere and learn how to add different sounds to create realism to a video project just like a real Foley artist. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and drop a line in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for alerts of when new videos are posted. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy creating.